everything. All right, guys. So we are in Learn HTML and CSS Part One: Images, Adding Images. Let's go ahead and jump right in. It should be a good section. Obviously, images are a very important part of your website and things like that. Um, let's go ahead and jump right in and see what we can do here. So we've kind of messed around a little bit with images uh, before, showing how to add them and whatnot. Now we're gonna go ahead and change something. So as of right now, apparently these images are too big. So how are we gonna fix this? Well, in our CSS, let's go ahead and find our project.img. Here we are. We wanna go ahead, we're basically saying for the product class where there's an image, we wanna set the width equal to 100%. Now let's go ahead and run this. You'll notice now that these, it's taking the way say, look, only accept it to the 100% of the content box. And now we're able to change our images to, to dynamically change based off the size that we have available. Let's see if this will. So you'll see how they're kind of scaling a little bit. But they're never going outside the, the box. Now you'll see that it starts talking about some other stuff. Take a second to read over this. It mentions display block as well and the margin property and float. So we'll probably be using those right now. Now let's go ahead and add a background image. So you see how we have all of this. It's all blank. We want to add a background image to our cover ID. To do that, it's simply a background dash image property here. And then we're going to pass in the URL like so. There's an example here. And then within it, let's go ahead and copy this. You're gonna need to put quotes in here, so don't forget to do that. Let's go ahead and run this. And now we have a background image for that ID. So there's a couple things you can do here, although no repeat is probably the most likely one that you'll, you'll be doing. You can actually repeat the background, especially if it's smaller. We don't want it to repeat. So, we don't want this image to repeat regardless of, of uh, the size of the page. To do that, we can go ahead and put the repeat and then no re in uh, the background dash repeat and put no repeat or no dash repeat rather. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have background dash repeat, no dash repeat. Now if you have like a simple tile or something like that where it's the same throughout, you're, you're gonna probably wanna make that repeat but that that's usually not too many sites nowadays. Now you'll see there's a whole bunch of positioning that we can do for this. Uh, you have left top, center top, right top, all these. Um, definitely, uh, basically everything can be combined so that you can target the background and do certain things with it. So where do you want to position it? Right center. So what, what does right center come to? Right column, center row. Um, let's go ahead and see what they want us to do here. So we're going to position using background dash position this website to, oops, I put two, uh, top center. So that moves our image around a little bit. So we learned how to set up a background position, it's rep repetition pattern, and um, how to position it. Now, uh, oh, they want us to. Uh, combine this as one. So similar to how we did before, uh, you can actually just call background instead of doing these properties one by one. Put in the URL first, then you're going to put in if you want it to repeat or not, and then finally uh, the position. So my suggestion is to always do it like this. 
Don't don't start separating out throughout various properties and things like that. You're just gonna create more if you can. It, it all it all depends on the situation, but that's the best way to go about it. Go about it. So background dash size. This is something you're gonna be using quite often. As of right now, we have such a large image. Let's go ahead and do some stuff that maybe will make this image a little bit more manageable and to what we want it to do. Now, contain here extends the image as large as possible, which means it won't cover the, but the image will be letterboxed. What the hell is letterboxing? So cover will extend the full width or height of a container without distorting the image. So let's go ahead. I believe that's probably what they're going to do here. Oh, they want us to, they want us to contain it. All right. So we're going to do background dash size contain. Let's go ahead and run that. And you'll see now it's contained within our div, this specific div. So it doesn't make sense to use it, obviously. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and change it to cover because this looks much better. And you'll see that this image isn't distorted at all. And that's what cover does is it basically will fill up the box, yet it won't distort the image. So background attachment, kind of a weird name. Uh, for what it does is you can set if the image is to move up and down as the user scrolls This is a default value. So you see right here or if we want to set it to fix so that it's always there So say you wanted to have the same background on like a one-page application uh, This would probably be what you're gonna do. So let's go ahead and do that So we're gonna do background dash attachment and we're just gonna go ahead and set that to fix so now, let's run that. Our background, see how it's staying there, like so? It's only in the one section, but it's staying there regardless. So this is kind of uh, one of those cool things you'll see a lot on websites where you have divs blocking out some of the content, but there'll be something behind it. That's kind of what you would do with background-fix. I use this on my website um, to basically have a single background on, I believe, my About Me section. So gradient, we're getting into a little more advanced stuff here, it looks like. So let's go in the background image property of the BTN selector. Background dash image property, BTN selector. All right, here we are. And we want to add a web, a linear. All right, so we have this background image and we want to add this right here this I believe is some CS3 stuff so add the background image property so instead of adding an actual image like we did before we're actually gonna add a gradient color scheme so you basically start out one color here and then move across to the other color and transition so in the BTN selector here we are we're gonna go ahead and say look background dash image and then the first color is going to be hashtag FFD 194 and I imagine you could probably do RGB RGBA um, and then colors as well one three two four Gonna run this. So you see right here we did a nice little gradient. So it's, it looks like it goes top to bottom. There's probably additional things that you can do to make it so. But a uh, nice little gradient. All right, so we learned quite a bit in this section about images. We learned how to 
how to set the width and the height so that things fit like they're supposed to. We learned about the background image, um, background repeat, background position. Um, we also learned that the background images support uh, color gradients like we did here, which is a cool way of making your uh, buttons look really nice um, if you're doing your own CSS. So uh, there's a bunch of these, um, what is it called, WebKit filters? Yeah, WebKit that you can look up and uh, find out more about. That's kind of a real introductory to just one. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and a special thanks to you uh, supporting me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Definitely check them out at devmountain.com. If you're looking for a boot camp that's in front-end development, iOS, or UX, go ahead and give them a shot. Tuition includes housing, so you can get up and go and fully immerse yourself in the program. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.